God is with you. One of the greatest joys that a man can have is when he hears that God is with him. Because when you talk about God, you talk about the creator of the universe and all that is in it, the Almighty, the provider, protector, and the sustainer of all creation. Moses had been called by God and empowered by him for his assignment of delivering the nation of Israel from slavery in Egypt to the promised land in Canaan. Through his hand, God had performed various miracles, starting from the ten plagues that made Pharaoh allow them to leave Egypt. After crossing the Red Sea and camping at Mount Sinai and receiving the Ten Commandments, it was the time for Moses and the nation of Israel to leave Sinai and go towards the Promised Land. And God promised Moses that he will send an angel before them. Exodus chapter 23 verses 20 to 23 Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. One would think, after God promising to send his angel before them, Moses, their leader, would be satisfied. But look at what Moses requested from the Lord. Exodus chapter 33, verses 14 to 15. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Even though the angel was to be sent before them, Moses, their leader, found it best for the presence of God to go with them. But a better promise is revealed in the New Testament at the birth of Jesus Christ. The promise that was spoken through prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel is a Hebrew word meaning God with us. Now it is no longer about the presence of God as it was in the Old Testament, but now it is about God himself dwelling among human beings. Apart from us knowing Jesus as Christ, we should never forget that he is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. John chapter 14 verses 22 and 23. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. The scripture clearly shows the possible way of someone allowing God to be with him. First is believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross, getting born again, and then walking in love that is according to the word of God. And at this time, God the Son of the Father comes and makes their dwelling place in him. This is an additional to the power of God, the Holy Spirit, that indwells believers. John chapter 14 verse 16 And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. We need to realize that the middle wall of separation that was brought about by the sin of Adam was removed by the blood of Jesus Christ at the cross. God is no longer confined in an enclosed place like in the Ark of the Covenant found in the temple according to the times of the Old Testament. 
When Jesus Christ was at the cross, something great happened. As he cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last, immediately the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to bottom. Matthew chapter 27 verses 50 and 51 And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. This meant that unlike the times of the Old Testament, where only the high priest could access the Holy of Holies where the presence of God dwelt, now the presence of God left the temple to come and dwell in us. When Paul was in Athens, he stood in the midst of the Areopagus and spoke to them. He found them to be so religious as when he passed through the city, he saw objects of worship and found even an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. He further explained to them that the God that they worship without knowing is the God he has come to proclaim to them. Acts chapter 17 verses 24 to 28. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. This is how God has come closer to man. Now we no longer call for him in heaven to come and help and fellowship with us, but he is our Emmanuel, God with us. God is with us in everything we do. When we face battles in life, let us be assured that we are not alone. He has promised to abide with us in all circumstances. Therefore, he will fight for our battles if we acknowledge him. Haven't you read the scripture that says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them? Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. John chapter 4 verse 4 Therefore, no matter what circumstances or challenges that we may face in life, as believers in Jesus Christ, let us hold on to the truth that God is always with us and will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 to 6 Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? God is always with us in our businesses, places of work, and families. When we feel it is like the people around us have forsaken us, he sticks closer than a brother. Even in our salvation he has is faithful and has promised to be with us till the end of the age. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 With all these assurance from the word of God, our part is to believe that what he has spoken in his word is true. Therefore, we should acknowledge him in all things we do as we allow him to direct our paths, for he is Emmanuel. Joshua 10 verse 8 And the Lord said unto Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua stood on God's promise and refused to give up even when it looked like they would not have the victory God promised them. 
time was no longer on their side, but he held God by his word and dared to believe the impossible. Now let's look at your life. What impossible situation are you going through? You see, time was running out for Joshua. So what do you do when time is against you? What do you do when the clock keeps moving and you are not where you thought you would be in life? What do you do when the years and months keep flying by and the wrinkles on your face begin to form? I want to remind you, never lose hope. Have faith in God. Just like Joshua, even in the face of the toughest challenge, keep your faith alive. You see, you can. God can give you the ability to accomplish something that would normally take 30 years to accomplish in one day. He is not limited. But there are two things you need to do. Firstly, have faith in God. And secondly, don't give up. Hold tightly onto His promises. God deliberately assures us with His word ahead of time so that we have something to hold on to when it seems too tough. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 1 Peter 3 verse 12